Hello fellow cinephiles, 90s Film Guru here. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'll be reviewing Sam Raimi's third film in his, what became known as the Evil Dead trilogy, Army of Darkness. This film came out in 1992, was once again, once again starred Bruce Campbell in the lead role as Ash. The film was made for 11 million and went on to make 21 million at the box office. So not a huge success, but still made a bit of money back. Made his budget back and a little bit of money, I suppose. So it wasn't, it wasn't completely successful, but at least it still made money back. The film was produced in a sort of three picture deal that Raimi had with Universal due to the success of Evil Dead 2 and also Dark Man. And that allowed him to get funding to make this film and this was his concluding chapter in the, in the Evil Dead franchise, for him anyway because they set that up in the end of the second one, leading into the third, and we finally got the third, which is great, which doesn't always happen. There are a number of films that have come out who, who haven't had the ability to make that third film. This probably has the best makeup and creature effects and special makeup that I've seen in a film, um, and definitely much more than the first two films in a lot of ways. There are some great gags and fun moments in the first two Evil Dead films, but. There's just something about what he does here that's much more fun, much more theatrical, and, and we get much more of the prosthetic effects here, which I really loved. Tony Gardner did the um, effects of Ash, and while the great K and B did the rest of the practical effects and the special effects makeup, and also Tom Savini also <coughs> collaborated and helped it quite a bit, which is really kind of cool because he's a great example of those prosthetic guys who, who were came out of the you know <clears throat> Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street and a variety of other things so it's really cool to see him being part of this sort of film. The film received mostly positive reviews from critics praising Raimi's direction, humour and visuals and also Bruce Campbell's performance which I think this is his best the best interpretation of the Ash Williams character which I really love and there's just something about him here that's a lot different than the others. But the film was criticised for its lighter tone than the previous two films. But I guess that's the point. This one's really fun it's, and that's what the film's really going for. The first film was always very dark and gritty and sort of really independently and creepy and well made for, for its time. And then the sequel up the ante, and this sequel had humour as well, so I don't see the difference between the previous film and this third one. In regards to the humour, it felt very similar. This does have, I guess, a little more zany and wacky humour than Evil Dead 2, but it still is in the same vein as what they did with the previous film. Roger Ebert, my favourite, which we all know, one of my favourite critics ever ever was, he only gave the film two out of four stars. He said the movie isn't as funny and entertaining as Evil Dead 2, however, maybe because the comic approach seemed recycled. So he just felt it was something of the same. I, I disagree because I felt this was doing something different with the Ash character, the prosthetic work, and also the storytelling, and the story that Raimi wanted to tell in this one compared to the previous two. It is a very fun and entertaining film and they both Raimi and Cam will have a lot of fun with it and, and so do the rest of the cast. During one particular scene um, when Campbell's character Ash is fighting a, a knight on the stairs, he cut the bottom of his chin, he rushed to the um, emergency room and to get it sort of fixed with, um, with plastic surgery, the doctor said to him, which cut? Because he had so many cuts on his face. And <clears throat> This didn't stop production so much as they came up with a sort of prosthetic thing to put across Campbell's chin and you couldn't really tell that's what they did and that adds to the sort of film and they could dirty that up and stuff and still keep the wound um, safe and um, be able to heal properly. But I think that's kind of cool. That's sort of typical, I felt, of Bruce Campbell in these Evil Dead films getting hurt, Raimi doing, making him do extraordinary things and, and getting hurt in different ways and that's, this is an example of it. And according to Campbell, it was really originally meant to be set in the 1300s and it was meant to be called Medieval Dead. But it just didn't kind of work out for them or I can't remember exactly what he said, but there was something that forced them to not be able to do that. So they only went with the, it's a slight take on King Arthur, I guess, in a way, and Merlin and sort of set in a different sort of era, but it sort of followed suit with what we had in the, in the end of Evil Dead 2. Campbell also said it was a difficult shoot for him, he had to learn certain choreography, 
and fighting in the movie and a lot of the things that he had to pretend to do and learn to do he was fighting things he couldn't see so it was sort of learning a sort of number system of when to turn when to swing the sword and such because it blended stop motion and animation and variety of things so it was kind of tough on his part it kind of made me think of what Brendan Fraser had to do in The Mummy when he had to learn to fight and do things when there was nothing there and that's kind of this is kind of a precursor to that in a lot of ways, especially with the film set in this medieval time. It just sort of kind of felt like the mummy in certain ways. There's a cursed book. They have to sort of go up against something they, they don't know how to defend themselves again. It's an unlikely group of people coming together to do that. It just felt similar in many ways. Raimi was really inspired by Ray Harry Houston, who is very known for doing stop motion animation is, and is sort of the, the godfather of that sort of stuff. And he was really inspired by that and that's where he came up with doing the <clears throat> the skeletons that have stop motion that was straight out of something that what Ray would have done, which is really cool. It's a very fun film overall. For those who haven't seen it, <clears throat> this third film finds Ash transported to medieval past, whereupon he is viewed as the chosen one, tasked with the sort of sacred book the only book that can send him back to his time and defeat the increasing darkness that has started to engulf the land. He has to work with unlikely group to fight the evil and return him to his own time. This is where we find Ash, and, and like I mentioned, I think this is the best interpretation of Ash here. He just feels much more in control, much more stronger, especially with the opening sequence where he gets thrown into the pit and he has to fight this person who's possessed, pretty much a deadite that he has to fight. He gets his ass kicked to begin with, and then he rises up and becomes the hero once the Merlin-esque character throws down his chainsaw. <clears throat> and the way he jumps up and it hooks onto his hand is really fantastic. And it shows, it shows them the hero he is, and he takes the sand. But then when he has to go and get the book, that's when things start to fall apart and he starts to become the old Ash. But I just like the interpretation of him, and also the fact that this moment in it where he chooses to become the hero. He isn't thrust into it, he isn't thrown into something where he has to rise up. When the love interest is taken, he, he decides to, to take charge and help the men fight this pure evil that has appeared. And I think that's really great, and that's sort of where he differs from the ash this we saw in the two previous films. It did get me, this third one did get me thinking that if you really think about it, each one of the Evil Dead movies sort of has a, like a, a recap in a way. Obviously not the first one, but it ends in a, in a way, and then the second one picks up from where that one ends and sort of tells you what's happening, and then they do the same in the third. So realistically, except for the first one, to tell you the truth, you could watch any one of these in any order and you still understand what's going on. You could watch the first one and know what's going on, but you could jump in to watch the second or the third and they have a recap so you know the story. And I think that's really cool. So it makes these films in a way stand on their own two feet, stand aside from all the others. It has been a while since I've seen this film. I picked it up on Blu-ray and it has three versions of the movie. So you've got the theatrical version, director's cut and television version. Now, the theatrical version is probably the one I know most and have seen quite a number of times. And then I thought I'd check the director's cut out, which, which adds a little few scenes, but the most difference between the director's cut and the theatrical cut is the ending. Now, if you haven't seen Evil Dead, Army of Darkness, this is a bit of a spoiler. Um, so if you don't want to know this, skip forward in the video, to this point in the video. Um, because I'm going to get into a little bit of spoilers here, but I need to kind of talk about it. So with the theatrical version, Ash makes it back home. He sleeps for a number of years, taking the tonic that the uh, Merlin-esque character has given to him. And he wakes up back in his time where he has to kill a dead eye and he starts telling this story. And we kind of has, he's kind of this hero and then this thing appears and he shoots it. Like it's a really cool hero moment and it's like, Ash finally wins. After all the stuff he's been through, through the first film where he's possessed by a dead eye and loses his hand, to the second one where he's trapped in the house and trying to break free of it into now. And I thought that was a nice win. But the original director's cut, what Raimi originally wanted was, Ash doesn't make it back to his time. He takes too many drops, he sleeps 100 years too long, and when he awakens, his world is gone. We're in the future and the world has ended and he sort of hasn't won again. 
it feels like a, a punishment. It feels like Raimi always wanted to punish the Ash character all the way through the series, and this is how he wanted it ended. The studio didn't like that and forced him to do a much happier ending, and that's the one you get from the theatrical version. That's the version most people have seen. But I kind of like the fact that there is this original version, and this version does suit um, what has happened previously in the Evil Dead movies in regards to Ash and him not winning. <laughs> And it sort of makes sense why Raimi wanted to do it this way. But the other ending works as well because you finally get, he finally gets a win in a way. I would call Ash a lovable idiot. He starts out cool in this film and then he just slips back into that stupidness, that choices he makes and how it affects him and, and how he's kind of really selfish about everything. Like he's meant to say these particular words to get the book. He doesn't say them right and he unleashes the evil on the... On the on the country, on the world, and he has to sort of become the hero again because of that, the reluctant hero. He's good at screwing things up, but he, he you know, he stands strong and he becomes the, the great character in the end because he becomes this hero who stands his ground against his evil and finally takes it on head to head without whinging or whining or trying to run and hide from it. He just stands his ground, which is really cool. And there are moments where he acts like he doesn't care, but he really does care about what has happened and his involvement in what has transpired. I always found this film fascinating to have it set back in, in a different time period. And I think that's part of why I like it. It sort of is different to the previous two. And it's sort of refreshing in a way where we find Ash in a completely different environment, but up against similar things, but trying to navigate that since he's not familiar with the, the world that he's been thrust into. It was a sort of decision made. Uh, I think originally the original concept of Evil Dead 3 was going to be just completely set in the cabin again. And I just felt they had done that before, Raimi and Campbell and everybody involved. And so they cho chose to do something different. And that's why we get this medieval version, which I really love. I wish it was called Medieval because I think that's a great title. But I really love what they do with the film. And I really love this period that it's set in. There is something about this one I like a bit more than the other two. Fun quest element to it. I always love quests in movies and then it sort of has that fun, like I said, mummy aspect to it, which I like, which which gives it sort of a journey, sort of makes it a sort of a great journey film for Ash and what he has to go through in order to return home. And it has a bit more fun with itself. It doesn't take itself too seriously and hams it up as much as possible, which kind of makes that sort of a much more enjoyable and fun film. Where Evil Ted where Evil Dead 2 did that, but not as much as this film. There are a number of scenes I liked in the film. The opening where Ash has to take on a dead eye and become the hero, which is really cool. It shows him in a different light. When he has to go and get the book is a really clever scene. His face gets stretched and all these weird things happen because he has multiple books to pick from. He gets attacked by one particular book. There's some really cool moments in the film like that. And of course, the battle at the end where you've got Deadites, you've got The Walking Dead, you've got um, skeletons, you've got knights. There's a whole great aspect to it and there's a really fun elements to the movie in this last act and I really love that about it. It has a solid cast of sort of character actors which I really loved and M. Beth um, Davids is really cool in it who, who was in Schindler's List and Matilda and a few other things and she's really great here as playing the strong female character that has to battle these evil with, with Ash, which is really cool. Obviously, Ted Raimi's in it. I think he plays like three characters. He plays a Deadeye at the start that Ash fights in the pit. He also plays two more villagers in the film, ones that are against fighting and one for fighting. So he just takes advantage of his, Raimi takes advantage of his brother in, in a great way. And the film was also written by, once again, Ivan Raimi, Sam and Ted's brother. In the end, this is one of my favorite sort of horror comedy films, probably just a bit, probably my favorite Evil Dead in a way, just because of the funness and, and the experimental aspect to it. And just, they just had a ball. You could tell they just had a ball making this film and that sort of shows in the, in the version of the film that we get. It might be a little silly and goofier than what most people expect from Evil Dead, but I kind of like that. That's kind of what has made these fun, these films fun in that the, the horror is, there's a lot of com comical aspects to the horror, which I liked. And it's just one hell of an entertaining and fun film. I'd give Army of Darkness three and a half out of five. Really fun film. I had a, and enjoyed myself immensely with it.
this. If you haven't seen this film, do check it out. Anyway, that's all from me today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please subscribe down the bottom. Follow my letterbox on Facebook. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movies.